This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And in this week's episode, we're joining many other vault dwellers and returning to the wastes of West Virginia in Fallout 76. There's a lack of hardware securing those barrels together, but they are very short and very thick, so probably not needed. I mean, it's not needed because it's not real. It's not real and it can't hurt me. If you want to see more of Jonathan reacting to Fallout's guns, be sure to check out our previous episode where we break down the weapons of the Fallout TV show. But without further ado, it's over to Jonathan. Hey, we've got the Colt Single Action Army, 1873, iconic cowboy, quote unquote, revolver or a version of it anyway. Seven and a half inch barrel or representation thereof. This is one of ours. We have we have a lot of these happily. This, lacking all its finish and with some old pitting, what an antiques dealer would call honest. <laughs> but that's because it's from 1874. Serial number 418, which is pretty amazing. The game gun is looking pretty good. I mean, it's chambered in, in a 44 Magnum. So the, these were chambered in several cartridge types. 4440 would be really the only period correct 44. If it really is 44 Magnum and it, it really does recoil like it is, um, this old thing would, if you could even fit that cartridge in there, would explode. This is a pretty faithful single action army. Yeah, the usual sort of nitpicks, like maybe the angle of the front of the frame here isn't quite right, but overall it, it does the job. It's clearly what it's supposed to be. Something a little bit weird with the reloading mechanic there. It's or re reloading animation, I should say. Correct. Loading gate gets gets opened. Uh, we're on half cock and we're revolving the cylinder to each chamber position. But the way the cylinder's moving is a little weird. It's like the, the left hand is doing something up here by the ejector rod, and that's magically revolving the cylinder. Unless I'm missing something there. It seems like it's revolving on its own. And then in third person, that left hand isn't even doing that. And the cylinder is just spinning around on its own. In, in reality, you'd want to use your left hand and manually rotate to the next position. This thing indexes pretty well. So you can just click it, turn it to the next click and do your thing. Eject, insert, turn. You're not so worried about having to rotate and then rotate back against the stop to get it to get the chamber lined up which seems to be what the animation is doing so i don't know if that's based on a, a different revolver but uh an 1873 in good order properly with all the timing working as it should it should be relatively quick not necessarily your sort of cowboy movie or video game more accurately spin the cylinder the cases just fall out in a cascade and then you you thun them in at super speed not quite that but maybe actually a little bit faster potentially than the, the game is depicting. We've got correct single action operation shown there. It's not the hammer is neither staying still nor is it flying back and forth magically like a double action. That's all good. And the general sort of graphics of it look pretty decent. Somehow feels right despite being a very old design by the timeline of, of Fallout. Of course, the thing is still in production to this day. Um, we've had multiple generations of single action army. Um, Colts still make them, various reproduction makers make them as well. And who knows, somebody might even have set up a production line in the parallel future that Fallout exists within. People joke about Fallout's, uh, Fallout's gunplay where it's you're shooting while walking backwards. Oh yeah, that, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> that being the case while you're using a single action revolver like this makes it all the more tense and terrifying. Yeah. Is this somehow an ideal post-apocalyptic handgun because it's mechanically simple and single action maybe if we're looking at newly made things and they're rediscovering the same issues that colt did when they tried to make double action revolvers and they kind of broke quite a bit then maybe that could happen again low capacity only the classic six shooter with a single action yeah i don't want to be backpedaling against a, a mutated bear or whatever um armed only with that i'm afraid i'd rather have a spear i think in that situation Now, always a challenge these because we've got modular, modifiable weapons. I'm not just looking at one take on a Remington 870, which is what this obviously is supposed to be. I'm looking at 
you scrolling through different options. Of course, the first thing I'm struck by um, is the left left handed nature of this. There there are or were left handed 870s, so it's not actually necessarily a mistake. Probably the nearest thing we've got to this configuration is this 870 Wingmaster. But it's a longer barrel. Pistol grip shotgun's really not a good idea. One major reason, which is all you know, lack of control. You've really got to do that. The, the push pull, or the push pull the other way. Proper iron sights on this, which is again something you can do. Typically, they won't have them. They'll just have a front bead. Classic shotgun aiming. Sight along the barrel. Use the bead. There's actually a, a channel there to help you sort of align. But there's a perforated heat shield on this one, which makes it look a bit meaner. Shotgun is going to be a go-to weapon in this situation, as we've said before. The barrel's not going to wear out, although you will have to deal with leading, the build-up of lead. Extremely versatile in ammunition. The reload's pretty good. It's not um, it's not too fudged. It does actually look like there's some effort going on there into inserting the cartridges up into the, the tube here. Now this is an original design that I don't think I've seen before. Funnily enough, the first thing that comes to mind are the box guns from League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, where they stuck AKs and Uzis and Tommy guns, I think it was, into riveted steel uh, casings. Uh, automatic rifles. Who in God's name has automatic rifles? Yes, Very big and bulky for an SMG. People think sheet metal equals lightweight. Sheet metal versions of designs made in machine steel, yes, but all things being equal, sheet metal guns can weigh quite a lot. You need big metal blocks in there to keep them rigid. A little bit reminiscent of, I think you've mentioned this, Dave, of the um, HK SMG2 in loose silhouette. In this thing's favor, really very important with a fallout game. It looks like it's been designed and made at the end of the world. Lots of gu guns in the games later on, especially, unless they're being made by some pretty capable people. You know, we talked about gun runners last time and how you know, and people in the comments helpfully pointed out that stuff is still being made in this world. So you don't actually know how old the thing you're looking at is. But although I have my issues with the pipe weapons in some ways, because they're not, they don't feel like they could work. Stuff like this, I'm much more on board with. It feels right as a parallel universe apocalyptic weapon. Like the 10mm pistol, well, 10mm pistol feels like parallel universe before the apocalypse. This feels like it's something they're making after. Have you spotted the rear sights? I was just about to ask, is that the M1A1 rear sight? Well, technically it could be M1 or M1A1, but yes. Flat sheet of steel, fold up the sides, press out and fold up the sight, and then you've got a, a cut on the top and a hole in the middle giving you two aiming options. That's definitely what, what that's from. I didn't see anything else on that that was from anything else though. Tempted to, to revisit this, but I should probably just stick it out with Fallout 4 and finish that. Okay, I'm looking at what appears to be a handheld M2 Browning 50 cal. Pretty sure that's what I'm about to witness in use. And it's called Vampire's Gold. That's a specific variant, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's playing into the RPG or MMO element of 76. Modifiers could do weird things like this one heals you as you damage enemies. I see. So the vampire name is indicative of it draining health from your enemy? Yeah. I'm not a fan. <laughs> not a fan of that kind of... Do you dislike that more than the paint scheme that I added? I know I complain about it, I know I cringe at it, but in a game like Fallout, who cares? People are gonna paint stuff up however. Any original finish on a gun that hasn't been made yesterday in a factory is long gone. So you're gonna wanna paint it with something. So why not? It's, you know, it's that Mad Max kind of vibe. So I have no problem with that. But the idea of um, bullets having sort of magical secondary effects, is, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I wouldn't mind that, incidentally, in, um, I don't know, like a heretic-esque first-person shooter that has magic or Bioshock-type game where arcane science and magic go on. But there's none of that been introduced to Fallout as a, as a franchise, so not wild about it. We've got the reciprocating barrel there. That's good. Big crank cocking handle coming back. We have lots of these. I can't easily show you one at the moment, unfortunately. As to actually plausibly doing this, 
is probably about as plausible as a minigun from the hip, to be honest with you, but for different reasons. And this side is <laughs> when you go to reload it, top cover up, uh, belt off the bead tray. How are you holding it with one hand? If it made you set it down on the ground for reloading, I'd be a bit more comfortable with using this from the hip. It makes much more sense if we were trying to apply logic to using this gun in the world of Fallout. Much more sense once I'm in a suit of power armor. This feels like a, a, a weapon, a Brotherhood of Steel member or something would be using handheld. Of course, absolutely you would. You know, if you have that augmented strength and sort of stamina, why wouldn't you up gun? You know, the, the in the show when he's running around with just a pistol, it's almost, it's sort of disappointing because the potential of the armor isn't being utilized. So yeah, I'm all for the mini gun, the 50 cal, big heavy flamethrowers in power armor. But it's not changing the handling, I'm guessing, with, with, the, uh, with the armor. No, it all, all remains the same. Yeah. Okay, this is very much like the model 1841 Mississippi rifle. We've got two. Um, I could, can't lay hands on either of them at the moment, but we do have a nice picture of one of ours on our online collections page. So proper muzzle loading there. Oh, it's a little bit cursory. He's not really sort of ramming that bullet down. It's not bad. There's a big old powder horn, a literal powder horn, or the powder there. By the period where this was actually in use, you'd be looking at a copper flask. So the ramrod is, I mean, I'm glad they're depicting it actually getting rammed somewhat, somewhat properly. Technique is way off. Now, this is given where we, where and when we are, it's perfectly plausible. This guy's never been shown how to do this properly. He should be drawing the rammer up and then for the rifle, probably just bringing it straight down in um, sort of overhand grip, not not like this. You do that in order to pull the rammer up out of the, the pipes, spin it round, putting it in this orientation for ramming. With most rifles, the ramrod comes out of the pipes you feed it up, grasp it, and you push it down, and then you give it a good old um, ramming. <laughs> this is a bit cursory. It's a bit glossed over because you don't want to bore the player to death and frustrate them. <laughs> the pouring of the powder is very kind of, yeah, it's just going down there, whatever. If you just kind of just offer it up and hope it all goes down, half of it's going to be on the floor. A bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> this double barrel, uh, sorry, this quad barrel here, he's just yeah. dumping the powder onto the, the muzzle and hoping that enough goes down all four to then be able to ram. I do, I do quite enjoy the kind of frantic dumping of powder. You would very quickly run out of powder doing it that way. So we do have four barreled muzzle loaders in the collection. Nothing really, or certainly not, in, not where I am right now, nothing of this configuration. We have got this thing which is a breech loader, which is a Lancaster Payton oval bore, top brake breech loader with under lever cocking. And if you want to know more about this thing, we have a video of it on our World Armouries YouTube channel. But for the moment, I can use it as a prop. Firstly, the powder, you dump the powder on there. Yep, something's going to go down there. You're not going to be able to control how much goes down each barrel. So each shot is going to be slightly different. Then we've got a handful of four bullets or four or round balls, whatever you want to call them. They're going down there somehow, except they probably wouldn't. You might get one or two down there. The other two would roll off and you have only one or two shots. Then we've got the ramming, which is a little bit kind of glossed over. But there's enough going on that I don't really mind, despite having <laughs> talked about it. It's it's muzzle loady enough. <laughs> you can you can quote me on that. So moving on to the next muzzle loader here, we have the good old fashioned blunderbuss. The Fallout Blunderbuss, or this one anyway, is a percussion lock, much like the other weapons that we saw there. We have percussion blunderbusses. Blunderby? No, it's blunderbusses uh, in store and on display. But um, the one, I, the only one I could grab is a flintlock and looks rather different. We'll go over some details in just a second, but I've tried to make up for the fact that this isn't that much like the one in the game with this. It has a very cool quite long, quite effective, spring-loaded bayonet on it. These were not uncommon, actually. Usually much smaller and sometimes mounted under the, the barrel. 
with the rammer on the side, but it turns a single shot weapon into something much more capable, uh, at least at close quarters. It's still very short. So rather than me run off and get a blunderbuss pistol, you can see another video on our channel talking about one of these that belonged to a French king, which is pretty cool. There's something they've got backwards here. We have a brass barrel, not uncommon for blunderbusses, and an iron breech plug with tang. And that's the way round you need to do it. You do not want a brass tang, which has the breech plug that keeps all the high pressure in. You don't want that to be a soft, malleable metal and the barrel to be iron or steel. You can do it that way round, but it's not the best use of materials. This kind of looks like someone's looked at the fact that muzzle loading guns have a barrel of one material and a, and a tang of another, and they've just thought, well, that's what matters. We'll, we'll just swap that over. So you end up with this weird brass strip down the back of the gun that you won't see on a real uh, antique. And overall, I think it looks pretty good. Barrel band at the front looks a bit kind of jer jerry-rigged, but hey, this is, um, this is Fallout's version of a muzzle loader. Who's to say, it? I mean, I assume it's not meant to be an antique. It's presumably somebody's sort of homemade attempt at one. I'm not sure what the law is for any of these muzzle loaders that I'm looking at. If they're real antiques, they're obviously extremely old by this point, and I would be very worried about firing them. Because of the location of Fallout 76 being West Virginia, is there like a parallel between, you know, the game featuring black powder weapons and the, the history of the weapon in West Virginia's real history? Probably. <laughs> yeah, all of those muzzle loaders, I think, are included as, as a nod to to American history. They just not they haven't been slavishly realistic to any particular one because who cares, frankly? It's not unless unless you retrieve any of these from a museum or something. It's it's more just a sort of nod than an actual solid reference. For a lot of my time revisiting Fallout 76, the black powder weapons were quite comfortably the most damaging weapons that I had. Oh really? Obviously, they take way longer to reload and everything like that but the rifles were firing like 50 caliber ball ammunition but that's kind of a misunderstanding of black powder because the diameter of the bullet is only one part of the equation and muzzle loaders are relatively low velocity you know uh, uh, even a musket is, is only developing something similar to a pistol today or a low-end pistol perhaps it's just crushing its way through the target and so the the larger the bullet the better really so the idea that these are somehow ballistically superior to anything from the 20th century or 21st century is pretty silly to be honest that said you do not want a 50 caliber lead ball smashing into a limb because it's in terms of treatment of the injury, especially in a, in a world where medical care may not be the best or the most available, it is possible that a big, heavy, slow bullet dragging in all sorts of foreign bodies and bacteria, smashing bone could be worse than getting shot with a full metal jacket, nine mil pistol round. So there, there's always there's always nuance to this stuff, but broadly speaking, your, your cartridge weapons are going to develop much more velocity, do much more damage. Short Gatling gun. Now they could have called this a Bulldog Gatling gun because Colt did manufacture what, what is known as a Bulldog Gatling gun. A bit like the whole bullpup thing, just short. Short and squat, the meaning of both of those phrases. Very slow. So the real Colt Bulldog on a tripod, you crank that thing up to significant rates of fire. This is more akin to the sort of 1862 to 1880 era, almost like miniature field artillery Gatling guns. That's offset by the fact that you're actually hefting this thing at the hip, which would make it really mechanically awkward to crank it any faster than he is. So in a way, it's sort of realistic, but it's realistic in the unrealistic context of carrying a giant heavy steel and brass or iron and brass gallon gun. It's very cool though. I'm taken with the, the sound effect, the, the animation, the old school nature of it. We do see the front sight uh, akin to a real Gatling gun, which is mounted on the, the barrel frame that supports the barrel cluster. Impossible to use in this configuration, of course. It's it's hard to, to, to really talk about the effectiveness of the weapon just because there's an MMO, you've got like a level 50 weapon and the, the enemies are leveled to your level. Oh, I hate that. I, I did actually <laughs> have a lot of fun with it. I was quite enamored with it, especially when you see other players use it and they're in like hulking hyper modern power armor, but their Gatling gun is like one of the most effective weapons. So it's uh. some really old school weaponry in some guy wearing like Tesla coils that, that I was a fan of. Fair enough. Yeah, well, I certainly like the look of the thing.
All right, next up, tactical Gauss shotgun. We've had the Gauss rifle from Fallout 4 before, but 76 adds a selection of other Gauss weaponry, which was quite cool. So there's some sort of almost honeycomb arrangement of barrels, it looks like, inside an outer jacket. I like the look of it, with the sort of double roundish chamber looking things and the uh, Nixie tube round count thing where it spools up to whatever charge you're letting go. That's cool. Yeah, you can either click rapidly to deliver more shots or charge up your shots so that each shot is more powerful. I think we've, we've spoken before about how Gauss and magnetic accelerator weapons, as it were, in real life are maybe a bit dull because there's not much going on to see and games always make them more interesting and kind of plasmary than they probably will be when they're portable. I've said this a lot recently, but it's very fallouting. Yeah, I really like that, you know, 76 has expanded the sort of Gauss arsenal of the world because there's Gauss pistols and things as well, um, as well as like a Gauss minigun. I was at the mercy of RNG finding these weapons, so I haven't got a Gauss minigun. But knowing that that sort of family of weapons or the, or the type of weapon has been expanded on in the universe, it was cool to see, and I was enamored with the shotgun. It's quite an intriguing idea that people might recreate the pattern of a shotgun with future technologies by clustering essentially barrels or means of generating some sort of projectile or energy bolt or whatever by just clustering a load of them together, mirroring what happened with not shotguns, but the opposite, things like the knock volley gun, where you've got lots of weight and expense, but you get a tight control pattern on target. Modern shotguns mean you don't have to do that. You can have a single barrel, lightweight, and achieve the same thing and you just change your choke to to create whatever pattern you wish um, and use different ammo and all that but conceivably if we have a future technology where we want to have we want to increase hit probability and if we ever want to recreate a shotgun effect with something like that you probably would have to stack barrels similar to what seems to be happening there It's going to make me think of one of the shots from the show where it says Hollywood brought to you by Nuka Cola. Yes. And I unlocked the gun by completing a mini game at Nuka World. And it just made me laugh the thought of, you know, in Fallout's hyper capitalist future, the brands were so big that they're getting like their own guns. They're like they're sponsoring guns or they're branding firearms. The only thing that's stopping that happening in our world, in our present, is controversial nature of firearms, to be honest. And then people will make up for that by just making their own, like um, using <laughs> IP they probably shouldn't, and just decorating things because they think it's fun or ironic or whatever. So we'll probably see a new Coca-Cola, a real new Coca-Cola lever action by the end of the week, I imagine. <laughs> and please don't take that as a challenge. <laughs> you know me and decorated firearms. So this is a, a Marlin. We've covered a version of this before from a Fallout game. It's a Jurassic World Chris Pratt lever gun, basically. I think it is a 95 that that's based on. Um, all of our Marlins are in a different store, unfortunately. We don't have a modern Model 95, which I would like to remedy. Pepper Shaker. Okay, is that a reference to Pepper Box? Potentially, as this is basically a giant shotgun minigun. Ah, it reminds me of the Hotchkiss revolving cannon. Got one of those on display down at Fort Nelson. I'm not sure what the, about the spikes and the nails, but you know, aesthetics. There's a lack of hardware holding those barrels, to, securing those barrels together, but they are very short and very thick, so probably not needed. I mean, it's not needed because it's not real. It's not real and it can't hurt me. But <laughs> considering that guy's just taken like half a dozen Gatling shotgun rounds, he, he barely seemed troubled by it. Bee swarm? Let me tell you, those bee swarms are deadly. Don't underestimate the bee swarms when you're trying to steal honey. They nearly took me out. It was a good thing I had my shotgun minigun at my hip. Yeah, well, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Flying insects in uh, Fallout. Bad news, generally. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the guns of Fallout 76. I think we might have run out of Fallout, Fallout games at this point, but I'm sure another one will be along for us to review in, in future. Please do check out our website at the Royal Armouries. You, from there, you can find our social media channels, uh, especially our YouTube channel. If you enjoy me rambling about guns, you might enjoy more of that over there as well. 
Uh, we've still got our reloaded exhibition of decorated firearms. Some of them are quite video gamey um, until uh, the end of June, if you can make it to our Leeds Museum. But otherwise, I'll see you here again on GameSpot next week.